Hey everybody and welcome back. Today I have a client with extreme damage. She told me that her hair was like the worst that it's ever been. Um, and if you look at it, you can see these ends. Look at this. You can see right through it. Um, it's pretty dense in the roots, but the ends are very stringy. Uh, she's saying this from heat, but she wants heat again today, which is not a problem because it's what I always tell people is heat is not the enemy. It's just lack of knowledge on how to use it is. So um, we're going to get her hair together today. She showed me a picture of a bob, but from the looks of things now, it might not be able to do a bob. But once you blow dry it, it could be a different story because we all know that the shrinkage is very real. I'm going to take my royalty sprayer and I'm going to spray her hair down to make sure that it's wet enough so that it's easy to comb through to get the blow dry process much easier for us. Um, I think these spray bottles are sold out right now, but they will be back on sale the first week of Christmas. Well, the first week of December for our Christmas sale. So look out for them. You know we never use heat without going in with our satin serum and applying that all over the hair. A little bit goes a long way. A lot of people are like, that little bit for the hair? Like, yes. When I'm finished, it's always product left on my hand. And you don't ever want to use too much because then it's going to weigh the hair completely down. Now I'm going to go through her hair with this big shampoo comb, wide tooth comb, whatever kind of comb you need. Just make sure that the teeth are very wide because it's less stress on the hair and it makes this process very easy. You want to make sure you're always gentle, especially with the comb out process, because this is when the hair is most weak. So you want to make sure that you are taking your time so you don't break any unnecessary strands, because every strand counts. So I'm just going to go in with my favorite dryer and my favorite brush, and I'm going to blow her hair out. So on the last video, we started a question segment, and I am going to do that again on this video. The first question is, my hair is a bit stubborn and it frizzes up instead of curling. How do I gain my curls again? Okay, so I would say that the best way to combat frizz and get your curls back is just to experiment with curly products that will define your curls and keep them moisturized. Being a natural can take a lot of trial and error, but finally finding the best product for your hair is worth it. Aunt Jackie's Curl La La and Don't Shrink are two of my absolute faves, so maybe try them. So as you can see, her hair stretched really well. It blew it out pretty well, and it has a really good sheen to it. So it definitely is some healthy hair up in there. But now that it's completely blowed out, really the worst part of it is the ends. You see that? You can see right through it. It's very, very sparse. So it's cool. We're just going to blow dry the rest of this and see how it is. And I'm also going to make sure that her hair is heavy enough on the sides to give her the bob that she asked for. So now that it's all blown out, uh, as you can see, it's a little thin on the sides too. So her bob would have to be a little shorter than most bobs that I do, but that's not a problem because I like short bobs. They look super heavy and healthy. And you see the back, usually when people ask for a bob, the back is always the heaviest, but that's really the part of the hair that has to go and the sides is the part that needs to be there. So that always makes it tough to make a bob, but I'm gonna work it out. 
Uh, she also wanted a part on the opposite side, but her hair just happens to be a little heavier on one side in the front than the other. So I'm just going to part it on the, let me see, it's on her left. But as you're watching, it's on your right. I'm going to part it over there so that the weight of it all can just flow to the other side. Now I'm going to go in with the hot comb and get those edges nice and smooth that the blow dryer couldn't necessarily get so everything can be nice and even for the cut. As you can see, her hair also grows really low down on her neck, and I like to grab everything that I can, but I also don't want to stress my clients out. So I'm going to do what I can, but it's no big deal. Now I'm just parting out the first section to get ready for this cut. Um, bobs are one of my favorite haircuts. If you watch my channel frequently, you know that somebody asked me for a bob. I'm excited like, oh yeah, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm taking my Her Strands of Hair Shears. <laughs> Why did I get tongue tied? Her Strands of Hair Shears. And I'm just going to go in for the first section. <laughs> Okay, next question. I'm also a Philly native, left there some 20 years ago for NYC. Now I want to go to LA. What challenges did you have to overcome as far as moving, housing, finding work, etc.? I'm sick of the cold weather and the people. I definitely need a change. Okay, I'm not going to lie. It was super hard to adjust when I moved from Philly to L.A. I honestly had just went through a bad breakup. I was far away from my family and my salon. And my main friend um, who lived in L.A. had to move to Atlanta for work literally the week after I got there. I was broke, and it was just such a strain. Um, it took me about three years to get back on my feet. But honestly, it just took a lot of prayer, hard work, and faith to get to this very amazing point I'm at now in my life so basically I just had to start over starting over is not necessarily a bad thing it's just that you you know you just have to regain everything that you built somewhere else um it wasn't bad because I had Instagram and YouTube that directed people to me in LA so that worked out really well for me um but it's not it's not it's hard but it's not it's not a deal breaker. I would do it all over again if I had to. So I don't want to say any of that to discourage you. I just want to give you faith to know that you can still kill it no matter how hard it may seem. Just keep going and never give up. <laughs> I know that sounds cliche, but that's literally the gist of it. Remember, if you're in hair school, not to cut past that knuckle. Don't be in class like, well, on Deeper Than Hair TV, Key said we could cut our hands all up. That's that's not what I had said. I had told y'all, don't do it my way. Do it how you got to do it for your test. And then we'll do whatever is most comfortable for you.
so as you can see it's a bit asymmetrical she wants to slant it so we got a little shorter in the back and longer in the front it's also going to be a tiny bit shorter on the super thin side than it is on the fuller side um, but it's still going to look great Now, since her bangs are naturally growing like this, I'm just going to follow it and I'm going to take those stringy ends off and give her some shape. So while I'm layering, let's do another question. What would you suggest for people who are not able to access good salonists where they are? Can I grow my hair without having to visit a salon and have my hair trimmed? Because so many times my hair has been messed up and I'm scared of going back. Um. Okay, so yes, you absolutely can take care of your hair at home. All you have to do is come up with a bi-weekly hair regimen and just stick to it. Use good products. Wrap it every night with silk or satin. And yes, you definitely have to have your ends trimmed at least once every three months, even if you have to learn how to do it yourself. A lot of people ask me, can I teach y'all how to trim your own hair? And I think I'm definitely going to do a video trimming mine to help you with some tips. Now it's time to go in with the heat and smooth this hair right on out. So I am going in with my 22 Titania Iron. I know they're not in stock and they will be. I think I'm going to do these after the holiday so they won't get caught up in the holiday traffic. I think I'm going to do it after the holiday. I'm still trying to decide, but I'll let you guys know soon. And I am going to do it on the temperature of 410 and one pass. So just do one pass over each section of hair to avoid heat damage, especially if you're doing your hair at home. One pass is all you're going to need. If you wear your hair straight more than your natural curls, it is safe to put heat in your hair every three to four weeks as long as you or whoever's pressing your hair knows what they're doing or what you are doing. Make sure you use a good heat protectant, only use one pass, and use smaller pieces of hair just to make sure it's straight the first time so that you, know, you won't end up going over your hair too many times with the heat because then it's going to break down the bond. Some people don't care about their natural texture, but you still want it to also be as full as possible and your natural texture will cause that to happen. If you wear your hair natural more than straight, then it's more safe to just press your hair maybe once or twice a year. If you want it done more than that, it's okay. You certainly can, but the safest way to just not touch your curls at all once or twice a year is best.
when you are pressing the bang or the frame area, I like to always press towards the front. Although I put a part in it to begin with, that was just more so for the cut. But when I press it, I like to just pull it forward because honestly, it gives her the freedom to be able to part, put the part wherever she wants to. So that's a little trick. If you don't press a part in it, it won't be there permanently until she washes it. And that is so annoying when you can't get that one part out. So you know last we're going to add that glass brilliant and shine so it can be silky and shiny for the next two weeks and then we're going to wrap it and put her under the dryer. Uh, let's do one more question. How can I get rid of fairy knots? I'm a male with 4C hair and it's tough with these knots in my head. I ain't even tender headed and the rips I hear cause me physical and emotional pain. Okay, um, I would say start by sleeping on a satin pillowcase because with cotton you may be chafing your hair follicles and creating knots. You can also braid or twist your hair before bedtime. Uh, make sure you're using a microfiber towel and blotch your hair with it. Don't rub. Make sure you're getting regular trims and also use the right product with moisture. You always want to make sure that your hair is moisturized so that combs and brushes can slip through the hair instead of causing tangles. So it's coming down and it's looking like it's going to be pretty. Isn't it amazing how a haircut just makes the hair so much fuller? It just looks like a totally different head of hair. That's the part that gets me every time. It's like, nope, this is the same head of hair. And it's just the healthier hair making a debut. So all she has to do is wrap her hair up every night with a silk or satin scarf and that's going to keep her hair in place and nice and healthy and she also has to make sure that she gets her hair trimmed again every couple of months just to keep those fresh ends nice and solid all the way from root to tip. And other than that, I think she's on a great road to recovery and I'm going to make sure that she stays up on it because she was, you know, neglecting it for a while, but her hair is looking good.
it's looking like she likes it too. She over here uh, taking selfies. That's how you always know. As soon as some of my clients, they go straight to the bathroom and take them. But look at her. She even got up and gave me a hug. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.